I send warm greetings from Jerusalem to all of you at the Jerusalem Post Conference. The Jerusalem Post is a great newspaper with great editors like Steve Lindy. I wish you great success, Steve. And I wish your incoming editor, Yaakov Katz, every success as well. Today I want to talk about the power of words. The Jerusalem Post knows the power of words. This is what you do. Every morning, your editors and your correspondents wake up and decide which words to use. And you choose these words carefully because you know the power of words. Yet many around the world abuse the power of words. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. I want you to imagine that somebody stood up today and opened their speech with the following words. Yazidis are the most despicable and contemptible people to crawl upon the face of the earth. Imagine this person going on to say, Yazidis are apes and pigs. And then this person going on to say further, kill all Yazidis down to the very last one. This outrageous statement sounds like ISIS. It is ISIS. But replace the word Yazidis with Jews, and these statements are taken word for word from the leadership of Hamas. That is what they say every day. Now, anyone who utters such words about Yazidis, about Jews, about blacks, about any people, would rightly be labeled a pathological racist and a dangerous fool. Yet this hateful language that should be condemned everywhere and always is not condemned everywhere and always. Hatred against the Jewish people is so routine in the Middle East that many in the West fail to notice it, let alone condemn it. Millions of children are being taught daily that Jews are subhuman, that they're apes and pigs, and that they have to be destroyed, that they're vermin, that they must be annihilated. These children get up each morning, put their clothes on, and go to school. They play with their friends, they ride their bikes, but their pure and impressionable souls are then seized by fanatics. Their minds are, are poisoned with hatred. This is one of the worst crimes imaginable. No child should be taught to hate, let alone kill or want to die. Yet this is exactly what is happening daily throughout the Middle East, from Raqqa to Ramallah. Just imagine if it happened to your child. Imagine how you'd feel if someone took away your child's doll and instead hand, handed them a knife. The words have consequences. Just the other day, CNN interviewed a 13-year-old Palestinian girl named Sabrine. They asked her why she left school one day with a knife in her backpack to try to murder an Israeli. Here's what she said. I wasn't concentrating on anything, not playing or even doing homework, Sabrine said. I was uh, only watching Al-Aqsa TV. I saw all those girls and guys doing what they do, and I wanted to do the same for my country. She added, the hate that we have for them is our motivation. Now, Al-Aqsa TV, where Sabrine saw all this, is Hamas TV. That's the name of the Hamas television outlet. It's responsible for, the, for much of the violence that we see today. Sabrina is a victim, too, because no 13-year-old child is fully aware of his or her actions. But the adults that convince young Sabrina to dehumanize Jews and go out and kill them, they are responsible. The adults that brainwash little Sabrina to yearn for death over life, they are responsible. Ending this hatred is critical to advancing peace. This is the crux of the problem, this incitement to kill Jews and kill the Jewish state. Ending this is essential for peace. This is a mission I hope all of you take upon yourself today. Encourage your friends, your family, your elected leaders to highlight the hatred of Hamas, Iran, and I regret to say the Palestinian Authority as well. Combat their hatred by spreading tolerance and respect. Do not let their words go unchallenged. Battle back with words of your own. Never forget how much power your words have. Working together, I'm confident that hope will triumph over fear, that tolerance will deflect bigotry and defeat it, and that peace will overcome war. Thank you all.